Welcome to Motlow State Community College Introduction to Theater Design. Introduction to Theater Design. That's me, Professor Emily Seal. Um, I have an MFA, which is a terminal degree in theater uh, performance, but I've also extensively and professionally costumed, and um, I've been running the theater program at the Moore County campus for, oh, what, seven years now, um, with the help of other professors coming in and out, but I've been sort of the constant of it all. I inherited a wonderful theater program. Uh, that's my son, by the way, and my husband, who also works at Motlow. Um, in the, every fall, we have a children's drama and perform it for area children at no cost to them, which is a um, ongoing tradition that was started by Dr. White back in the 70s and carried through with professors um, Zimmerman and then Jeannie Tucker Gallant Brown. And so it's been a long standing tradition in the area. I'm very proud of the work we do and how we reach and bring theater into the lives of little children. And then in the spring, we get to do shows, um, rotating different kinds of shows to make sure that we're exposing. Um, students to all kinds of different, this one happens to be a musical, uh, Cry Baby, but of course we also do classical dramas, silly comedies. Um, we basically, is, as a small theater program, base it on the interests and the talents of the students we have. Right now, <laughs> we're not doing anything, <laughs> which is sad and hard. I'm glad we're staying safe though. Um, I have a picture of Times Square there because it is eerily empty. Um, as I record this, you know, the ball has dropped on New Year's Eve and uh, no tourists chatting in Times Square, so weird. But um, theater is no stranger to quarantine, right? Shakespeare wrote some of his best sonnets uh, while everything was shut down for the plague. Uh, Stephen Sondheim wrote one of my favorite musicals, Into the Woods, uh, during the AIDS epidemic, right? The first half of the play ends happily ever after. And then the second half of the play, we come back and half of the characters have died. And that was uh, Sondheim's way of talking about losing all of these people that he loved. And it, it continues to resonate with people um, who are grieving. And uh, I certainly pray and hope that that's not you right now. I hope you are safe and cozy and listening to this um, in a position where the pandemic is not heavily affecting you, but I, I would be naive, wouldn't I? Um, surely people you know and love have been affected by this pandemic. So um, keep in contact with me, please. Uh, let me know how you are. You know, at the end of last semester, I had students write me after grades were turned in and tell me that they had COVID or their aunt died of COVID. And please don't do that. Please um, keep communicating with me. Um, and uh, certainly, I care about your health. Um, hopefully, future listeners are listening to this little sound bite and COVID, you've been vaccinated and this is a thing of the past. And you'll hear my little COVID commentary as I record lectures as a sort of oddity of years gone by. I speak that. So I apologize. I know the textbook is expensive, but it is such a useful tool. Let me tell you, I still have my sixth edition from when I was um, a student and I use it all the time. Uh, it is a manual that you can pull out at a soundboard. It is a manual that you can pull out when you go to do your makeup. Uh, it is just extensively useful. And if you go on to MTSU to get a theater degree, uh, keep that textbook because they use it there as well. The other textbook that I am asking you to utilize is Much Ado About Nothing, which is, oh, I'm so sorry. I get these error messages. Uh, Much Ado About Nothing, which is free online, but you may want to buy uh, a copy. I know some of you probably already own a big compilation of Shakespeare's play, such as a Riverside. I treasure my Riverside and keep my notes in it and things. But um, remember, with Much Ado About Nothing, you can always just print it off the internet. I've included a link to it in our learning software. So, um. If you've had me before, and I'm assuming you probably have, but um, allow me to step up onto my soapbox once again and remind you that creativity is a skill. 
So this is really a drawing-based class. One of our main goals of the course is for you to be able, by the end of the semester, to be better at communicating your ideas. And for us in theater, we're a visual um, genre, right? And so being able to draw, being able to communicate through your, your ideas, through uh, creating collages, through creating um, sketches, is really a valuable skill. Now, I've, I've modeled. I've tried to create these assignments myself just to remind um, myself at how difficult it can be, first of all, and also just to guide you and make sure you have the supplies you need to succeed. Um, and uh, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfection, but I do want you to try to apply yourself. Um, you've got three sketch costume sketches. I didn't actually require you to sketch uh, your set model, but if you would love to include some sketches, I would love for you to do that. I think they'd look great in your portfolio, which is the main goal of this class, which I'll talk more about in the Much Ado overview. I like how that rhymes, Much Ado overview. So there are six quizzes in the class, uh, 10 questions, multiple choice. They're only worth 10 points a piece. Um, I just want to make sure that you are keeping up with the reading. Uh, the main goal of this class is hands-on assignments. So four discussion questions, uh, you know, getting to know you, getting to get you to reflect with each other about much ado about nothing, because I think iron sharpens iron if you um, understand the play well and you guys can bounce ideas off each other that's going to be super valuable those discussion questions are open they never close they don't have start dates either you just have to get them done by the end of the semester and um, I uh, always hated when I took online classes for discussions to close and we were in the middle of a good discussion and there goes into the sphere so uh, the discussions are worth a hundred points so a really weighty assignment, um, but just making sure that you engage, use your best grammar, and um, apply some thought as you go into those discussions. So you have three costume designs. So within each design, you'll start with a collage. And I, once again, go over this in the Much Ado um, lecture, but you'll have a collage that sort of includes details of the costume, such as the earrings, maybe, or the shoes that you don't uh, necessarily draw in detail, but we can see the visual of an artist statement linking the collage to your drawing. So maybe you say in your statement, you can see the flowers in the bottom left-hand corner of my collage. That can be depicted in the bouquet in her hands. So um, as far as what medium you turn these three assignments in, I'm open. Uh, I always create my collages in PowerPoint. I've found that that seems to be the easiest place uh, to create a collage. And then, of course, you can save that PowerPoint as a PDF. Um, I will not pretend that there isn't going to be somewhat of a technology issue here if you're not technologically savvy. Um, you know, I want to see the drawing, but of course if that just is a picture that you've taken with your phone, my main goal is for that drawing to go in your portfolio and be there for job interviews in the future, uh, scholarship opportunities in the future. That main goal of that drawing is for it to go in your provided portfolio. So, um, you know, pictures with your phone is absolutely fine. The technology on phones these days is amazing. Don't feel like you have to go buy a printer, scanner, um, whatever it may be. Now these collages you'll provide to me in a digital format, but I do recommend that you go to McMurr's or go to Office Depot and print those out and go ahead and put those in your portfolio to have in the future because inevitably when that job interview comes up, inevitably when that scholarship opportunity comes up, you're racing around trying to get everything together for it. So why not, as you work, go ahead and print and have those ready. Um, and you know, gets you to the next level. So a ground plan, if you've ever bought an actor's edition of a play script, you know, or been cast in a play and given the actor's edition of the play script, you know those ground plans are in the back. They're the eagle eye view of the stage from above, and um, you'll be kind of plotting that out in a one quarter inch to one foot scale. 
and then we have a set design. You'll create a collage, a statement, and then a functional model, or what you might have been heard in the past called a white model, but it doesn't have to be white. It can be black, just your um, basic structure of the model. And then you'll turn in for 100 points the full production model painted and you know if you want to glue some curtains in there add finishing touches all in color then that is what that production model is now it's worth a hundred points that production model is the functional model statement and collage is worth 60 points ground plans only worth 10 because it's really just you getting ready to create this to scale functional and production model and then each costume design is worth 60 points and I think I already said 100 points for discussions altogether and 10 points for each quiz. So um, the way that I kind of structure my classes is for them to all be open at the beginning. So really, first day, if you don't have your book, you can't get started. So I don't have any due dates until um, a month into the class. But I leave everything open so you can work asynchronously because... You know, I got a communication education certification when I was a full time um, working full time, and it was really hard, y'all. It was so hard, and trying to balance my work and my studies was very difficult. So I'm always aware that I'll have students who maybe um, are working their way through school, and deadlines are tricky, tricky business. So um, I've opened everything up. It's all available. You could get all this done as quickly as you want. I do have deadlines built in um, for my procrastinators, but it's all available on the first day to get, get started. And so um, please, 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 especially in these uncertain times, don't procrastinate. Don't get too close to your deadlines. Um, time is often the enemy of art and your best art. I would encourage you to pick up a pencil and start sketching now just to continue to build those still skills and um, get working. Some one of the hardest things that can happen sometimes is staring at a blank page. It's almost like writer's block. You've just got to get sketching, get moving, and not let yourself be intimidated um, by these uh, assignments. So every time you have a quiz I first recommend that you start by reading the chapter thoroughly and or chapters and um, make sure that you highlight underline if you're not returning your book um, you know having that textbook as your centerpiece for the course and then I'll have a lecture for every quiz. S two of my lectures this time are actually really good videos that I found. One is Cody, my friend from grad school, um, who is just a genius and costume designer. And um, another is a guest lecturer from um, UC Irvine, which is a fantastic school. Of course, Irvine is near LA. And so her wisdom and breadth of experience was just too good to pass up. The other lectures are provided by me, and of course, anytime you don't understand a concept or um, I'm here for you via email. And then before you take the quiz, please go check out those terms and concepts to know. So I've taken the time to kind of list out the testable content for you and go back to your textbook, highlight, circle, put a star by, and then you're ready to take your assessment. Now I get some pushback on my assessment. I always, you know, have the 10 questions, multiple choice, 40 minutes to take the, the test, but you only get one attempt. Um, in other classes, I know you get multiple attempts, but the thing that we've seen over and over in online uh, classes is cheating, unfortunately. So if you only have one attempt and I don't tell you the correct answers, I know that your education may suffer a little, but it helps keep the quality and the integrity of the class high. So please don't write me an email saying, what did I miss? Or, um, you know, can you give me the answers? Because unfortunately the answer is going to be no, because I'm trying to not have the answers out there for people to share via Quizlet or some of these other 
I don't mean to down talk Quizlet. I think Quizlet's a great tool. If you use it, no hate. I'm sure there are some Quizlet questions from this textbook because it is so standard in the industry. Um, but please don't cheat is what I'm saying. And please don't ask me to give you the answers to the quizzes uh, because I've been burned, as many professors have, by cheaters. Speaking of burns, <laughs> so in the um, assignment of creating a model, you'll be using a X-Acto knife or a utility knife to cut foam board. And then I have included hot glue as my methodology for getting the foam board to stick together. I know people who can use cardboard and just use wood glue or Elmer's glue. And if you can make that work, more power to you because I definitely don't want you to get burned by the hot glue gun and the napalm that is. Um, you know, I would advise you to make sure that you have your glue gun pencil that you don't mind sacrificing to the glue gun gods as you work. Uh, better that than get blisters on your fingers because, of course, we know glue gun is the napalm of the craft industry. I don't imagine you're a stranger to it, but just a reminder, please be safe. Don't touch the melted glue. Don't touch um, the melting nozzle. Uh, be careful as you work um, to not be around children or anybody who may be tempted uh, to handle your hot glue gun. Uh, with a utility knife, make sure, or X-Acto knife, make sure that it's sharp. Uh, make sure that you have that other hand clear and you're not going to cut yourself. Um, I always cut with a metal ruler holding down with both my thumb and my pointer finger next to uh, that to sort of create that searing blade and then I cut once to create the line and then I cut deeper. I never just swing that blade around with no point awareness. Um, I've had students when I taught high school who had to get stitches during my uh, set model building section so I'm ever knowledgeable of that and please 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 be safe um, handle with care take your time make sure your blade is sharp and make sure that you've got plenty of um, space that you're working in that is a safe environment um, be careful you always use the cutting mat that goes with the exacto knife don't want you to tear up your furniture I have a table that my brother-in-law cut up with an X-Acto knife uh, when he was crafting once, and uh, it's not cute anymore. So please be careful. You know, please um, take your time. Don't procrastinate on these assignments or work on them late at night or while you're drinking or anything like that. Uh, oh, anyway. So last but not least, make sure that we're modeling professional communication. I know that some of you are probably familiar with your, each other, theaters or small circles. You've probably worked together in the past and you can um, speak to each other in a way that may you know, seem inappropriate to outsiders, but please keep the forums, especially the discussion boards, uh, civil. Please make sure when you sit down to write an email to me that it's respectful and clear and um, I will always try to return that favor of respectful discourse. It's something that's very important to me. Part of the goal of this class is to learn how to communicate and work in a team. Uh, and so we definitely want to model that. So if I haven't already said it, I love theater design. It's one of my joys when I am picking a play. I instantly get these late night ideas ideas and I'm constantly scribbling on napkins different visualizations and ways that I can bring that text to life. It brings me so much joy and not being able to work on the children's drama or on the spring show has been um, very difficult for me. In fact, I've started scheming on uh, a new Sleeping Beauty for us and I, you, know, you just can't help but always have a script in your head. And um, so I hope that this is a good haunting for you. I hope that you know working on this design curriculum um, inspires you and that you feel inspired uh, to do good work because really the goal of this class is for you to walk away with a design portfolio that you can be proud of and that that de design portfolio can launch you into opportunities, whether it be designing for a community theater or for a four-year school or for professional theater. So 
Um, I have a minimum requirement of my assignments, but of course, use the textbook, dig in, um, keep sketching and creating, and um, now is a good time. You know, like I said, Shakespeare wrote his best uh, sonnets during the plague. You know, we can't safely do big musicals right now, but we can um, sit and sketch and create and brainstorm ideas for future things. And once all of this passes, we really are going to need um, art to help heal our communities and tell these stories in meaningful ways. So as always, thank you for listening.